Hello, welcome once again to Access Humboldt's Community Voices. My name is Paul Rousseau, I'll be your host. In this edition, we'll have Nick Wilzak, Director of the Humboldt County Library. Welcome. Hey, hey thank you, Paul. Yeah, library, yes, you know, sir. I've got an idea of what a library is, you know, mm -hmm. growing up. Sure. And now the question is libraries, 21st century. Yeah. What does that mean? Okay, um, it's a really good question Thanks. Uh, to start with, <laughs> right? An easy one. Um, so the, the first thing I always like to say is that I don't think, um, I, I don't think the library is a warehouse for books. I don't think we are a building to store books. Um, it's one of the things we do, but I don't think the primary thing. Um, it's a community center. It's a place for people to hang out. Um, and so I always kind of frame it as um, the library, uh, the role of the library is to use the tools that we have. That's the collection is one of the things. Um, staff, programs, events, um, to kind of serve the needs of the community and make the community a better place. So that's great that we check out books. It's one of the huge things we do. It'll always be a big part of it. Um, but I think it's just one piece of the one. What piece are the, of the communities thing. that you're building around the library? How do you mean? Well, uh, are there study groups? Are there oh, research sure. groups? I mean, what are the communities? When you said that earlier, yeah. <clears throat> who are the communities that use a library? Okay. Um, so first, when I say we're trying to make the community a better place, I, I mean the community right. at large. Right, I understand that. Um, and so in the library, some things we've had going on, um, large group of people that come to local history events, we have had, uh, in conjunction with CR Adult Ed, we've been doing intro computer classes um, that have been really popular. We have been doing American Sign Language classes that have been really popular, 30, 40 people at those. Um, so... Are there classes offered every quarter? Every oh, there's semester. classes offered every every week. We have a class going on. A different class. I mean, how do people so, find out about this? Yeah. Um, so in the library, you know, there's there's the flyers up, of course, um, but then also on our website, on our Facebook page, um, they're in different uh, media outlets that people advertise. So um, a variety of ways. I'd say the easiest and best way is just to go to the Humboldt County uh, Library website. So you have the, the main library, and then you mm -hmm. have branches. And yes. Do you have the old bookmobiles as well that go out? Bookmobile still goes around. I yeah. loved when I was a kid the bookmobile came. Yeah, it's still a thing. I think she goes to 14 different communities throughout the county. Um, she does a really fantastic job heading out. She kind of tailors the collection that she's carrying to different uh, to the communities that she's visiting at that time. Um, she does a really wonderful job decorating the bookmobile, and it really feels like you're just walking into another branch when you get on there. It's now, is that a way to get people to eventually use other branches of the library to come to the main library? No, I don't look mm -hmm. at it at, like that, really. I just kind of think that's the location that, that they'll use, like in the same way that I wouldn't think of someone using you know, the Trinidad Library. The goal is to get them into the Eureka Library or anything like that. You know, I would even say that if we have people who come in and get their library card and then never come back, they're at home and they're using their card to access um, our databases or our eBooks, anything like that. And that can happen too. Now, there's a sure very can. 21st century aspect of yeah. libraries. Yeah. So. Um, and the you know paper circulations are still the the biggest thing we do. Um, Ebooks are circulating faster and faster, so they get more and more popular. Um, but I don't look at someone who uses the library you know exclusively from home as any less of a, a library patron than someone who's at the library every day. As the director for the county, mm -hmm. do you go to the other branches? Do you go mm -hmm. on the bookmobile? Do you get a, a sense of what the county wants by going out and talking to the patrons? Yeah, well, and I talk to, you know, staff as well. And so I visit other locations quite a bit. Um, I was down in Garberville earlier this week and spent the day down there. Um, so, yeah, I'm around quite a bit. I was out in Hoopa a couple weeks ago. 
Um, it's, it's one of the. You're kind not of, originally from Humboldt County, I so it not. must be kind of fun. Oh, it's a blast! Yeah, it's it's a blast driving around, and so um, yeah, it's one of the great parts of my job is getting out into the county. I like meeting people. I like seeing the other libraries, so it's now, great. I know you came from Kentucky. Were you mm -hmm. a librarian in Kentucky? Yeah, I was. And did so, did some of the same aspects of a rural Kentucky library uh, offerings connect with what? A Humboldt County offerings are like? Well, um, so I'm from Lexington, Kentucky, which, which is, is not the country. It right? is not the country. It's close, right? You can drive you know, 20 minutes, right, and be out into horse country. Um, but no, it's a college town, and I think people would be surprised at the size of it if you know you were to just be dropped off in Lexington, Kentucky. It's not really the country. Um, so I was a librarian there, and you know, to some extent. Libraries are libraries and people are people, but then to some extent not also. You well, know, I would think there'd be different. a greater and challenge so, in a rural place like this to go ahead and yeah, connect up the libraries. Yes, and so, you know, there's infrastructure issues. Um, the geography kind of makes it tricky when there's places all over with the great distance in between. Um, and so, yeah, being in a, a rural area is, is definitely a different kind of situation. There are also other situations that exist mm -hmm. on the North Coast and challenges when you talk about people hanging out at the library. Mm -hmm. What has that been like in this day and age and times that are tough for people and uh, maybe a population hanging out at the library that wasn't a traditional population sure. that hung out at the library. Yeah, um, so we have a lot of people struggling in, in Humboldt County, various various reasons, right? Um, I think you know, primarily that kind of question is, is about you know homeless folks, right. people with mental health concerns, um, people with drug issues, right? Um, and there are certainly behavioral uh, issues that come along, you know, with with some of that crowd, right? Mm -hmm. My take is that by and large, folks are all right. You know, um, some folks struggling more than others. Some folks are a challenge. Um, we have a good relationship with EPD. We'll call them if need be. We have a security guard in Eureka that's there all you know, open library hours, and so. There are some issues, but... Is that the only branch that has those issues, possibly? Mm, no. Maybe Arcata? Arcata has some of those issues as well. Um, and, you know, let me say that I, I don't think the issues at the libraries are really any different than the issues in the city, right? So I think some of the issues at the library here in Eureka are kind of the same as some of the issues you would see anywhere in Old Town, Arcata, the same sort of thing. Um, yeah. Do you see the library as a place in the future where services might be offered? So, yes. Um, and to some extent, there's, there's services offered now in that it is a place where you can come be all day, regardless of, of who you are. Um, we have DHHS social outreach workers. Um, they don't come into the library, but they walk a lap around the library a couple times a week, see how people are doing, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And is this, you know, when you trained yeah. to be a librarian, Yeah. and now as we've, we've changed it, you've got patrons that are at home, you've got bookmobiles yeah. going out to the road, you have these, are, is this more than they offered in your librarian coursework? <laughs> yeah, so, so if, if you're, planning on being a, a public librarian, right? And uh, you're going to grad school, you are not gonna get a class on working with homeless folks. I think it is um, maybe maybe the biggest gap in, in uh, education that you're going through to be a librarian. Um, but my first job when, you know, when, when I was in Kentucky, uh, the library was adjacent to the park where a big chunk of the city's homeless population hung out. And so kind of from day one of working in libraries, it's been something that I've, it's a population that I've been working with for, you know, 11 years, 12 years sort of thing. So um, I've got some experience with Do it. Do you network with other librarians around the state? Are there... Are there things that they're seeing that, that they help you with and things that you might be on the, you know, the head of the curve on? Yeah, so um, 
I, I know librarians kind of across the country, just haven't met a lot of people going to conferences. Are there librarian conferences? Oh, yes, and they're shockingly fun. I was going to say, yeah. do librarians really yes. like to party? Yes, it, you would be surprised <laughs> that... I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> yeah, so librarians are actually pretty cool. I'm, I'm biased, right? <laughs> All right. But, um, yeah, there's <laughs> many, many library conferences, and they are shockingly fun. Um, so, yeah, and it is something that, Folks are dealing with it pretty much every library. Let me ask this, in this day of, you know, these allegations of fake news yeah, and facts sure. and all that kind of stuff, is that a conversation amongst librarians as to what's offered, you know, in libraries? Are there do you find libraries in certain part of the countries that censor for whatever reason or anything of that nature? So I am sure that that happens. Really? Yeah. Because why? Because who, who, who gets the materials to put in the library? Is that your decision? Do you have somebody that is uh, looking for books, looking for printed materials? Um, there's a large uh, kind of swath of people at the library that do that. And so you've got folks, um, you know, someone is in charge of cookbooks. Someone's in charge of X range of, of uh, nonfiction, right? right. Um, but there are always folks that are going to want to keep certain things out of the library, be that staff, which is not usually the case and never that I've experienced. Um, or patrons, you know, when I was in Kentucky, there was a, a library in the next county over where a staff member thought a graphic novel was inappropriate for kids, mm -hmm. so she repeatedly checked it out and kept it on hold really? and effectively took it out of circulation and was fired for Passive, that. Passive aggressive librarian. Right, it, you know, so again, I, I do not want to Im imply in any way that this is common among library staff. It's very counter You've already outed to librarians. What, this to wild what, group. Let's talk about <laughs> right. Let's talk about uh, library things. Wild within the ethics of our profession. Uh, right. And so um, but yeah, there's always people who don't want certain things at the library and I, that's going to be anywhere. So in the back to these people that are making the choice. Yeah. Okay. Does a director go in and, and look at those choices? And is that something that you ever do have oversight over? So I'll look around the stack, see what's up. When I am kind of walking around in the tech services area, I can see carts of things that have been purchased. And I'm, I'm speaking with staff pretty much all the time. So I'm, I'm abreast of what's going on. Um, but by and large, it's one of those things that the people that we have selecting do a really good job with it. And uh, I feel really comfortable with the work they're doing. Our collection's getting better all the time. So, I mean, I have oversight in the general sense of it, but the day-to-day the -day workings of that are, are in other people's hands. Is most of your job uh, going ahead and connecting with local government? And a, a lot of it is building relationships, getting to know people, trying to partner with different organizations. And so. partner to do what? Oh, different things. Um, so, for example, um, earlier I mentioned uh, CR and their adult ed. Mm -hmm. um, so we've been doing classes with them. They come in to, to help that. Um, we've built a really good relationship with EPD, help keep the library safe. Um, what else? We what about local school districts? Oh, um, so we've done a little bit with some of the schools, um, building relationships. We have a uh, one of our librarians uh, was the library assistant at Eureka High for a long time, and so one of the things that we have opportunity to do better is work with some of the area schools. Um, we've been building a relationship with HSU. They just got a grant from the Institute uh, for Museum and Library Services for $100,000. They're going to be um, purchasing laptops and teaching digital library classes at the library, um, at the public library, you know, even though it's a, it's a grant through HSU. Um, so all sorts of all sorts of groups. Going back to a public school question. Yeah. More and more public schools are having a harder time staffing mm -hmm. libraries. So that means yeah. young uh, students are having less and less exposure to libraries. Mm -hmm. Are you worried about that for a future, a clientele that may not uh, be used to going to a library? 
Am I worried about it? No. Concerned about it? Is it yeah, a, I mean, I, do you think about reaching that demographic as they so, get So, um, one thing, let me plug. Um, uh, you um, should plug. This is your chance. What's that? This oh. is your chance to plug. So the uh, Ryan Ryan Keller, who does the librarianship over at HCOE, mm -hmm. I am sure is doing a wonderful job getting those kids library experience and training them to be great library patrons. That being said, I think that the challenge is is we're not going to bring new people into the library asking by kind of telling those folks what the library is and how they're going to use it. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to attracting younger folks, you know, kind of that gap in between, uh, you know, you get out of grade school and then you've got this kind of gap, right? Um, and so it's figuring out what those folks want in providing that. So the challenge is is figuring out what people want, um, you know, when you can get a lot of like right. books on your phone right away, and that's great. I mean, having access, but okay, so what's the thing that we can do then if, if that's become easier? You know? right. so, so that's the challenge. And how do you go find that out? Oh, shoots, talking to people, talking to staff, <laughs> <laughs> you know, beating folks, trying to, um, you can get your crystal ball out. Right on. Mm -hmm. Well, we're about wrapping it up. You know, I have a, my cousins are from Louisville, so I feel like, well, that's okay, they, you know. Uh, the, uh, what I was saying is, it was nice talking to you because it, it sounded like I was talking to my cousin Phil, but if you're going to be like that, the, people that's can't so, help where they're from, man. No, that's so good natured. That's so good natured, right? And it is, it's, it's a ridiculous college rivalry thing. Well, it's a real rivalry. It's, a it's real one rivalry. of the great rivals. It's one of the great cherish rivalries. It. It's not quite as fun since Rick Pitino uh, left, and you know, we don't get to be Now him, we have this great political rivalry. The head of the Senate is from Kentucky, and the head of the House is from California. How about that? You're right? in the middle of that one. So, Nick, thank you very much hey, for joining Paul, us. Thank you so much. Uh, that concludes this segment of... Community Voices, and we'll see you next time.